Hi everyone, today we'll be looking at uh, prefix tuning, optimizing continuous prompts for uh, natural language generation. So the common paradigm which is used um, in um, natural language generation is uh, to have a pre-trained model and then to update the parameters of the model for a particular downstream task. And that's called as fine tuning. You fine tune all the parameters uh, corresponding to a particular downstream task. One of the major drawbacks of this is you have um, you need to have multiple copies of the language model for each task. Like for example, um, table to text, you'd have to have one copy of the transformer and then update the parameters, summarization, you'd have to have another copy and update parameters, translation, so on and so forth, right? Um, it, it's becoming very difficult to train these um, uh, the size of the transformer models have become very large uh, with uh, some models even like GPT-3 having 175 billion parameters. So fine tuning becomes very expensive at this point. Um, this paper tries to um, address this drawback of having to update a lot of parameters during the downstream task learning by using this paradigm called prefix tuning. So what they do is um, they have a transformer uh, pre-trained model and uh, they keep the transformer pre-trained model um, frozen. And they introduce uh, continuous vectors called prefixes, which um, are different for each task. So you have one prefix per task and they prepend that to the input. And uh, basically by learning this prefix for the task, you are uh, able to um, get good downstream performance on that particular task. Now, um, let's say you have um, table to text. So something like this, where you have a linearized table with name Starbucks, type coffee shop, and you need to produce a text saying Starbucks serves coffee, right? So uh, you would basically prepend a prefix, uh, which is specific to the table to text task. And you would learn the parameters of this prefix across different transformer layers, right? And you would keep the transformer layer frozen. So by doing this, you're basically learning parameters, very few parameters. I think in one example, they say like um, it's, it's around like 0.1% of the parameters or something which they try to learn here. So you're learning very few parameters but you're also achieving comparable downstream performance to fine tuning. That's what they show in their results. So uh, this method is pretty powerful. And uh, this again is comparable to certain other methods like uh, adapters, where they introduce um, certain learnable parameters between different layers of the transformer. Um, and and there, there are also like there are some lightweight fine tuning methods where instead of fine tuning the entire uh, transformer model, they just do it across a few layers and they freeze the remaining layers. So this figure has a, a good illustration of what they try to do. So they evaluate uh, prefix tuning on a summarization example where they have a long article and they have to generate a summary of it. And also a table to text example where they have a linearized table and they have to generate a text description of the table. So, um, and they train it on two different types of models. Uh, one is the autoregressive model. Um, so here um, they basically have a prefix which is prepended to the input and then the output. And uh, this prefix, the activations of this prefix are learned and the, uh, these are parameterized by a feed forward uh, network and they learn these activations. And then the input and the output of the transformer can basically attend to these uh, vectors. Um, and none of the parameters of the transformer are changed. Um, the encoder-decoder model, what they do is they append the prefix to the input. They also append the prefix to the output, right? And uh, the same thing, the input basically attends to the prefix and the output also attends to the prefix. So the activations, HI, basically depend on 
whether they are part of the prefix or they are part of the input or output. If the activations are part, if I time step I corresponds to either the input or output, right? Uh, then the output, the activation is generated by the language model. If it corresponds to the prefix, then it's basically learnt during the downstream training. And uh, they evaluate uh, this on summarization and uh, table to text data sets such as E2E, WebNLG and Dart. And uh, they find that prefix tuning is at least for few data sets and a few metrics, it always performs better than fine tuning. So you you train on uh, you train very few parameters um, and also you get better performance and um, and in the places where it is low it's you can say comparable performance with uh, fine tuning and they also compare it with adapter which which is sort of um, which it, it closely um, uh, which yields a better comparison compared to fine tuning because there are very few parameters which are learnt and they find that um, the performance is always better than that of the adapter performance. And then they, um, they look at summarization, um, the extreme summarization data set and here they find that the fine tuning basically yields a better performance compared to the prefix tuning. So 2% and 0.1% is basically the number of parameters in your uh, vectors basically, right? When you come, when you use all the prefix tokens, uh, they are not tokens, these vectors, you only have 2% of the um, language model parameters. And they find that um, the prefix tuning is performing worse off compared to the fine tuning. Um, the reason they provide is basically because you have a lot of examples in fine tuning and prefix tuning seems to have a problem when you have too many examples and also that the length of the articles are too long in this particular data set. Right? Um, and one thing which they mention is where prefix tuning really shines is when you have fewer data points. Right? Here I think they experiment from 50 to around 500. And they say that if you have fewer data points, prefix tuning almost always performs better compared to fine tuning. And they also do a qualitative um, uh, example here, which they, uh, which they use to say that prefix tuning is more faithful to the source compared to fine tuning. So uh, let's take the example of this uh, prefix tuning and 200 basically is the number of examples in your training, which is only 200 here, right? So you have a linearized table where you have a name, the eagle, you have type, coffee shop, food, Chinese, price, cheap, customer rating, average, area, riverside, family friendly, no, and your Burger King, right? So um, you have to convert this into text and uh, when you use 200, parameter, 200 uh, training examples, you basically get the eagle is a cheap Chinese coffee shop located in the riverside area near Burger King. It has average customer rating. But then when you look at the fine tuning with 200 examples, you see the Eagle is a cheap Chinese coffee shop with a low customer rating. So you see how um, it's supposed to be average customer rating, but then the fine tuning kind of changes it to low customer rating. So it's not very faithful to the source. So they say that the prefix tuning is sort of better in that respect. Um, and they also compare um, uh, prefix tuning with fine tuning on an extrapolation uh, uh, data uh, extrapolation data so basically what they do is when you have this extreme summarization in uh, news to sports data set uh, you have two categories of data one is news and the other is sports which is a little different than news so you have two different genres they train on news and they basically test on sports and they find that uh, the prefix tuning method performs better than fine tuning method. And also within news, you have different genres like, you know, uh, world news, British news or uh, health technology. So they train on uh, topics which um, are not uh, used during testing. The, the topics are very different. And they see that um, 
basically prefix tuning performs better than fine tuning uh, in, in this uh, extrapolation setting. They then evaluate uh, different prefix lengths, right? Uh, because um, they haven't specified how many uh, prefix vectors need to be appended um, for to the input and they find that uh, there's like a sweet spot for example summarization they find that uh, beyond 200 uh, uh, vectors which are prepended you don't really get good performance and for uh, table to text you see that that value is even less with 10 and uh, they also evaluate um, a full versus uh, embedding only kind of setting. Um, so if you recall the first figure, uh, they basically said they are going to um, learn the, the parameters across, the, the, across different layers. And these are almost like free parameters, right, um, which they learn. Now, what they do is for the embedding only context, they only learn the first layer parameters, right? And they use the uh, transformer predicted parameters for subsequent layers. That is the um, embedding only setting. So if you look at the results of that, um, you see that uh, none of them uh, outperform the prefix only setting, right? Um, irrespective of um, how many uh, prefix length you have, um, prefix tuning which learns um, across different layers almost always outperforms learning only the embedding layer. And then they also um, experiment with infix tuning. So prefix tuning is where you have um, the uh, prefix, you have the input and you have the output, right? This is a, um, a prefix, this is the common setting of the prefix uh, tuning example or method, sorry. Um, so here the input can attend to the prefix and um, the output can also attend to the prefix and the input. But then when you look at the infix, uh, it's the infix setting is you have the input, you have the infix and then you have the output. So you have the output attending to the infix, but the um, input is not really attending to the infix. And um, the performance of this is also uh, lower than the performance of prefix tuning, saying that you probably need to have um, a prefix uh, rather than an infix. And then they look into the initialization of these uh, prefixes. Now, now they said these are continuous vectors, right? they don't really have to correspond to any tokens in the vocabulary. Like when you look at prompting methods, uh, you have a prompt to the model and this prompt is usually in natural language, right? Um, but here, you these prefixes are basically continuous vectors, right? Um, but they say that if you initialize these uh, prefixes with certain tokens, they seem to get better performance. And um, it's better if these tokens are relevant to what they're doing, like summarize or table to text. If you initialize them with random tokens, you see that the variance is a lot and also the performance is not as good. So they basically recommend starting off with some relevant tokens and then learning the parameters. And then they um, go on to say where this is useful. And they say that anytime when you have a language model, um, which has to be um, updated frequently, for example, when you have like multiple users and you have to personalize information per user. So the user data is basically, you don't want to, due to pri privacy concerns, you don't want to um, train on some other user's data, right? So you would have to, in the fine tuning setting, you would have to take the, language model, you would have to fine tune based on one user's uh, data and then repeat the same for as many users as you have. And um, in this method where you use a prefix tuning, this is particularly beneficial because you have your language model which is sort of frozen with the same parameters and only the um, user's input is going to change the prefix for that language model. So it's much more efficient. And then they also say that um, 
Sometimes when you fine tune aggressively, you can have the problem of catastrophic forgetting where you typically forget what the language model has learned and you fine tune only for that particular downstream task. So it is not going to generalize well. And this was seen in the um, extrapolation setting, right, where they trained on one topic and they tested on another topic and they saw that um, models which do not retain the language model parameters seem to struggle there. Models like the adapter um, uh, and also the models which have been uh, trained using the prefix tuning seem to perform better. So um, retaining the language model uh, parameters seems to help in generalization. So the main takeaway of this paper is fine tuning um, has, you need to update a lot of parameters, but if you do prefix tuning, you basically have thousand times fewer parameters and then it almost gives comparable performance when you're using the full data set for tasks such as table to text. For summarization, you may see a slight hit in the performance, uh, but then this method really shines when you have um, less data and when you have to um, use extrapolation, wherein you have not seen a particular topic during the training.